Welcome to a very, very cold Monday morning at uh, Tom's Garage, guys. I got a little video for you, something I'm doing for myself, amongst all the other things I got going on in here. Uh, my Toyota, I'm gonna do the first oil change. You can probably hear it running. I got it running to warm up. You want the oil warm. I have got 1,056 miles on it. And this is what we bought for it. The Toyota, I ran into the Toyota service tech at the hardware store. And he told me, yeah, go ahead and change it at 1,000 miles. He says Toyota actually uses the Mobile One uh, as their brand. They just rebrand it Toyota. Uh, full synthetic 020. And there she is, man. I tell you, doing oil change on these things ain't as simple as it used to be. You just don't crawl into there and take the oil filter off and let the oil drain, man. I had to take this air dam off, which I'm going to leave off. I think the truck looks pretty cool. That's usually the first thing somebody does when they customize it. They take that damn big old bulldozer blade off the front of it. I had to take that off so I can get to the four bolts that holds the skid plate on. Of course, I'm going to put that back on because... Yeah, call them here. The oil filter is right there out in front of this plastic housing. You don't want to let that get hit with a rock. And there's the oil drain there and always when you have it on ramps always put a couple of jack stands under there man this thing ain't worth dying for that'd be a horrible death too i just don't trust these plastic ramps either man they're plastic but i you know i put my suburban on these things and i don't hear a creek or nothing out of it but right now the driveway comes downhill a little bit but with those ramps the truck is sitting perfectly level. I even put a level on the bed. So she's sitting perfectly level right now. Which works out pretty good because it gives me a whole lot of room to crawl my big ass under there. And right now we have got... Ow. I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, 1,056 miles. Right there, 1,056 miles. And I've had this thing for, uh, hell, exactly two months now. So we're going to change the oil in this thing, guys. I'll show you how to do that, man, because it can get complicated. It really can. I trust myself because I'm mechanically inclined. Uh, but it can get pretty hairy if you don't know exactly what you're doing with a $46,000 truck or $47,000. Uh, you know, paying somebody $50, $60, $75 dollars to do this is not a bad deal. Uh, so I got it warming up, and uh, we're gonna change it, fellas. Hang loose. All right, there's your drain plug right there. You can look up inside the engine compartment and look at the engine. Don't accidentally drain your transmission pan. That's not good. Who that plug is a 14 millimeter, and also, don't forget, like I've done so many times, take this plug out. Because when you let that oil loose and it hits that pan, you're going to be panicking trying to get that plug out. And also, also open this. Because that's going to let the air out so it'll go in. I can't tell you how many times I forgot to do that too. And it just fills up with oil and bleep, bleep, you know. And oh, geez. All right, man. There is the drain plug there. It is a 14 millimeter wrench to take that bugger off. And there's my SK, trust SK. I don't know how tight this thing is. That's why I'm going to go ahead and put two wrenches on it. It shouldn't be very tight at all. Oh, yeah. There, I like this because it it goes just straight down, man. It's not shooting out at an angle like other cars. So let me, let me make damn double sure that is the oil pan. Yep, because there's a bell housing right behind it. 1,000 miles on this thing. There we go. It's a little dark. It's a 020, man. Look how thin that stuff is. And I just made a hell of a mess doing that. Well, that is some thin oil. And I should replace that ceiling washer there, but I'm not going to. See me. Boy, that's coming out like just water. Look how fast that's coming out. If you left that right, watch. I'm gonna put my finger over that hole right there. Look at that, how fast that thing's filling up. Yeah, you'd make a hell of a mess with that. I'm going to let this thing drain while I move up here. Uh, 
I'm gonna move up here and start working on this oil filter, man. I've never done a Toyota oil filter before. This is gonna be the first time I'm doing it. And I went out. Ugh. I'm just crawling under here on my back. I got a lot of room. I tried to use my creeper, but it pushed me too far, too close to the darn thing and get claustrophobic. I'd like to have room to scramble out money if I needed to. This is the tool I got on Amazon. A normal tool is only, it doesn't have this. And I'll show you what this ring right here is for. Usually they just have this part, but you want this. This will grab the entire plastic cup. And it says in the instructions, do not use a 3 8 wrench on this thing to break it loose. I'm using a 1 and 16 wrench to grab this entire hex part. And that's what it says to do. So we're going to, I'm going to let that drain for just a little bit until it just quits dripping. And then we're going to move to the front right here. All right, while the oil pan continues to dribble, I don't care if it dribbles for a damn hour and a half. I'm not a high volume oil chain shop. I'm in my driveway and I'm gonna let it dribble till it quits. So I'm gonna move up here, move up here to the oil filter. We're gonna take this thing off. I'll show you how to drain it. We're gonna go to the workbench and I'll show you how to dress it. Now, whenever you, where did it go? Ooh, I'm out of shape. Walmart is the best place to get oil and they also sell uh, OEM Toyota filters, air filters, cabin filters, oil, um, oil filters, all that kind of stuff. And when you buy a oil filter, it will come with this little plastic doohickey. And I will show you what that does. And I've got another extra little drain pan here under it. So I am going to pull this little cap off. Usually, if you do this for a living for a dealership, you can just take and unscrew the damn thing and just dump it without having to go through all this but and and you never have to take that off and replace that oil ring like they say to do every single time you change the oil so i'm gonna pop that loose that's not very tight i think about eight pounds foot pounds is what that is this will drain the cup see it's just a little little cap it's got an o-ring right there and this little tool, that little tool, see how it's kind of springy loaded? It's got a valve right there. What you do is you just push that up in there like that. Make sure your pan's lined up. Look at there. You got to snap it up in there with a little force. There we go. And that'll drain that cup. And we'll let it drain. Otherwise, if you just unscrew the whole thing, it'll be like taking a regular screw on oil filter off. It'll just go everywhere. At least this way you can control the mess you make a little better. There we go. And she's done draining. Just tilt it to the side a little bit. Okay, with your rag, it can be kind of tight. There it goes. Kind of push it to the side and it'll snap out. And see that O-ring right there just came off with it. Yeah. So the kit, the oil filter comes with that tool and it comes with both the O-rings, that one and that one. Okay, now let me get the tool. Find my big old one and one sixteenth wrench. I think it's actually metric, but I don't have a metric wrench that darn big. It's got a big tooth right there and on the other side. And this has got that funky design, which matches that. But see, this one is designed to go all the way up on it. I can do it just right here. Make sure you got it lined up perfectly. See, it'll grab that tooth right there. Give it a little tappy tappy there. This shouldn't be very tight either. There we go. It's going to be kind of tight coming all the way out. You may think it's cross-threaded, but it's because of that big O-ring inside of it. This thing ain't like a regular oil filter. You don't screw it on tight on top of a big O-ring. The O-ring is down on the end of the threads, and you're fighting the force of that 
o-ring all the way down and when you tighten this back up don't think the tighter you get it the less likely it is to leak it's not the tightness of this that keeps it from leaking it's that o-ring so when you bottom it out it ain't gonna take a lot of force just to give it that last extra little see when you run it all the way down you go from there to right about there that's about as tight as you're gonna want to get it so let me move my bucket here in case any more comes out yep and there's the oil filter you just slide it in and out so i'm gonna hit pause we're gonna go over to the workbench and we're gonna service this thing hanging loose okay here she is You just slide that out, dump it all over your workbench. Now this filter just slides out. It don't matter which way you put it in. And the new one, if you ever worried about getting a counterfeit part, especially with these oil filters, take it in your hand and just squeeze the shit out of it and you won't be able to. If you get an aftermarket or a counterfeit, you can take it and you just squeeze it and it'll just give. So that's, that's one thing there. Okay. Toss that, missed the trash can, it'll leak out on the floor. I'll mop it up later. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is take some of this Walmart brand brake parts cleaner. No sponsorship there. I'm just gonna clean this thing off. Rinse it out real good. And check out the car care nut on YouTube. That guy is a Toyota guru. He is what I watched to learn how to do this. Do it right the first time. I didn't want to booger it up in the driveway and have a brand new disabled pickup truck. Well, that's good enough, man. So what I want to do now is get this O-ring off of here. There it is. We got this one. Oh, and we got this O ring that stuck to that tool. I'll clean that tool up later. When you buy an oil filter, it will come with a pack of these O rings that you need. I'm not even going to wipe my hands or nothing off because it needs to have a little oil on it. I'm trying to figure out how to get this thing open without hurting that O ring. Now my hands are oily. Let me grab a razor blade. Let's see if I can keep from causing a catastrophe. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Let me go ahead and toss these old ones. I don't want to get them mixed up. All right, putting this big one on there. There's a groove right there. Don't put it up here on the threads, but put it right here. That's why you feel the tension all the way in and all the way out, because it's riding in that groove. Right there. And that's the bypass right there, that little spring-loaded mechanism. That's the bypass. Don't take that apart. Get a little oil on it. Now, I'll take and put this O-ring in here in this little groove. Let me spray that out a little bit. Blow it out. That brake parts cleaner and carb cleaner, man, it makes the O-ring swell. So make sure you blow that out real good. Make sure it's dry, you know, get all that brake parts cleaner out of there. To me, it looked like I had a bunch of crud in it, but it... May not have. Okay. And then we'll stick this new O-ring in there. It's kind of weird. Feels like that O-ring was already swelled, but I guess it's supposed to be like that. It is an OEM part, so I wouldn't buy anything aftermarket when you do this. I'm going to run that in there. Hmm. 
Yeah. So now we've got the new O-ring on there. We got that put back on there. After we get this thing installed, I'm gonna tighten that just a little bit more. And then you just put the new put the new filter on there. Feels kind of weird. I've never done this before. It's kind of tight. I was playing with it and I squeezed it watching that Eric or the the car care nuts video to see if this thing was counterfeit and I bet I squeezed it too hard and got it out around. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I was sitting there one night watching this video thinking, oh God, I got something aftermarket because I ordered that on Amazon. You know, at Walmart, that's seven or eight dollars. And this 12 quart box of oil was $60 at Walmart. Amazon uh, is way more expensive than that. I went to Napa looking at a five quart box and it was $48. And then Walmart had a five quart box of this for 26. So Walmart is a place to get the stuff, man. All right, now we got that. Got the new O-rings on there, got a little oil on it. And we're gonna head back over to the truck all right, all right. I got the whole assembly back together. And we're going to make sure we don't cross thread it. And as soon as you feel that O-ring go up in there, it gets kind of tight. You really can't do it by hand. So what I'm going to do is try to put my tool back on it. Just like that. And I am going to run it back up there with the 3 8 because it's not tight at all, really. You can feel the resistance. And then when you feel it, when you feel it bottom out, right there, right there, I felt it bottom out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it just a little Ooh, right there, that's it. That is it. And then I'm gonna make sure this is tight. All uh, right, I just felt that bottom out. And just a, uh, ooh, that's it. That's all the tightness you wanna give it. Okay, now, take my rag, make sure everything's dry. Cause I'm gonna run it for a couple of minutes and let it sit here and make sure nothing drips or leaks and let me slide the camera over a little bit the drain plug which is right there i can't see the camera there it is now i'm going to put the drain plug back in it it's been sitting there for probably 20 minutes one little drip there Run it all the way in by hand, make sure it's not cross-threading at all. Take your trusty 14, I felt that bottom out right there, and I'm just gonna give it a little, ooh, that's it. I've always had a habit of over-tightening stuff. All right, let's move up top and put the oil in it. All right, the owner's manual said it holds just over six quarts, 6.4, something like that. 020, so I got my handy dandy little orange juice jug and I, I actually measured this and I put marks on there all the way full is three quarts. So I'm gonna put two quarts at a time. I'm gonna put six and then check it. That new oil ain't very clear. Hell, it's got it like almost a red tint to it. Huh. All right. There's two. And let's see here. It's gonna be... I love this 12 quart box, man. This is cool. All right, turn it off. There's two more quarts. Look at there, that thing doesn't drip a bit when you cut, it, cut that valve off. All right, this will make four. I 
I hope y'all can see this, man. This headgear I got on, I can't see the darn camera where it's pointing, so. Yeah, if you pour it too fast, it'll come out the bottom of the funnel down there, man. You don't want to get too crazy with the cheese whiz. All right, that's four. Let's go over here and two more, man. This little orange juice bottle, it makes a great little oil thing. Oil can. Ah, oh, look at there, I just made a mess after I was bragging about it. Okay. All right, this is gonna be six. Well, I tell you, it, it is so time consuming to do this, you gotta pull the skid plate off, the front air dam, that oil filter. Now, when I was younger, I could change oil and just lick it split. Now you gotta go through all this, which is all right though. This truck ought to last me the rest of my life. I don't mind doing this, really. Take your time and do it right. Make sure you don't make a mess. Oh God. God, look how flimsy that is. All right, let's check the oil. Where's the dipstick? Let me set this down. All right. Good God, what a dipstick. Damn, you can check the car next to you with this big old thing. That's one thing I don't like about that new F-250 also. It, dipstick on that thing is about two and a half feet long. Let's see, I can't really see it that well. Looks like the level's here and full is here. So, I'm gonna crank this booger up and see where we end up. I got exactly six quarts in it by my calculations. Uh, that's in there, that's nice and tight. Let's crank it up, then we'll look under it. I don't see no oil light on, nothing like that. It says the door is ajar. It is not, it's a damn door, it's not a jar. All right, let me look under here. I don't see no leaks, except what I spilled. I'm gonna let it run for just a minute. So far, so good, it's been a good minute and a half or so. Let me cut it off. Okay. Now let me set this camera down somewhere and we'll check the oil. All right, let's see where we got. What do we have, what do we have? What do we have, what do we have, what do we have? You gotta feed it down in there just right at the right angle and then it'll bind up with you and make sure you get it all the way in. Yeah, let's see what that gives us. Well, this thing is hard to read. I'm gonna let this oil settle for just a few minutes. Let it all get settled to the bottom. All right, while that oil is settling up there, I'm gonna go ahead and put the skid plate back on it. It's not that big a deal, and this thing is pretty light. Let's see. Yeah. It's just getting down here to do it. I can remember how it, There's a couple of tabs on the front frame that will hold the front of this thing. I can find it. 
There it is. There we go. Now you just get your bolt started. Never thought I'd have to do this just to change the oil. That's all right. I'm not putting that front air down back on. It looks better without it. And don't cross thread these bolts because you're going to have to take this thing on and off for the rest of your life just to change the oil. Get them started. Things were pretty tight. That's all there is to that. Ooh. Now this thing has been sitting for a few minutes. Let's check the oil, see if it's all settled. This thing is hard to read. I'm kind of glad that oil was a little dark, otherwise, if it was clear, you couldn't see the damn thing in contrast to this. Thing. Let's see. Yep, that is just barely under full. So I'm going to add just a little bit more. And I'm going to call this oil change done, fellas. All right, thanks for watching this video, man. Uh, if y'all have any questions about Toyotas or anything, man, check out uh, the Car Care Nut. He's full of wealth and knowledge. Y'all be good, fellas.